facial expressions. So speaking of like, so, so you saying like the music changing and mu- being able to stay on top, stay relevant, be in people's faces and not only just doing it to do it, but doing it in a good fashion. So one person that comes to mind for me is Drake. Drake is always switching over different genres, trying different things. What do you, th- is that, what do you think about the way he goes about his music career? I think he's fantastic. He's I, besides Kanye, I would say he's probably my second favorite artist of the decade. Yeah, right. Or yeah. one of top five right now. I mean, maybe not of all time, but right. definitely right now. He's I I think that, and he knows how to stay on cultural trends. He knows how to pay homage, but still mm-hmm. be able to <laughs> tap into that new hot sound. He's definitely. not willing to take. He's not scared to take risks. He's rapping in Spanish with Bad Bunny. He's, yeah, you know, he's, he's singing, <laughs> singing and rapping. I think he, between everybody has been looking for the singing and rapping since Lauren Hill. Mm. Mm. Drake gets right a lot there. of the credit, and you know he's giving it to other folks. But yeah. the truth of the matter is, when Lauren Hill was able to go on stage at the Source Awards in 1998 in a red heels and sing and rap it was game on and the whole industry has been looking for someone to be able to do that That since and haven't been able to find it it's as crazy as that is drake can rap and he's pretty damn good at singing too Mm -hmm. i think drake's real presence though is his timing he knows Mm -hmm. how to watch him host the espies Watch him on SNL. Like, Drake mm-hmm. feels to me like a Mark Wahlberg type. Like, he's bigger than just his classic music. Yeah. This guy really understands how to capture culture and put his stamp on it and make it hot. While not disrespecting it at all, either. At all. Right. Because he gives yeah. that credit, yeah. yeah. He gives That's the credit. Nice. He's just, he's a, he seems like he's a pretty humble down to earth guy at the core. Yeah. yeah, he does. That's why I can't hate him. Ugh, he's so nice, bro. Why do you like, want to hate so him? This guy wants to hate you. <laughs> no, I don't Je- hate Hold on, Drake. let me talk no, to Jesse. Yo, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse, Jesse, Q, Jesse. what's going on? Yo, Jesse, hate- as somebody big in the music world, Q sings and he does a little singing okay. himself for me. I don't know. I feel like somebody like that, you're supposed to just look at and be like, No, nah, like, I genuinely love Drake. I, I genuinely love Drake. I just, sometimes it's just like, Sometimes what? What? <laughs> like, you know, you watching his interviews, and he's so nice. It's like, bro, like, this is not what I expect. Like, but nah, he's... He, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Canadians are nice. And, you know, I've met him a couple times and worked with him on a couple projects, and he rolls with a lot of bravado. He's not just sitting around being nice. Like, his... his when he moves around, it's 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 big and it's boisterous and it's yeah. super confident and like be. it feels like this is an artillery of, of trucks coming by uh i haven't gotten a chance to see the kind of like nice and sweet beyond interviews and things like that yeah. so i can't attest to sometimes these artists when you put the lights on they just turn on the je ne sais quoi and they just got it in their back pocket in spades and they can they just the play the hands. Mm-hmm. I don't know because every time I've worked with them and dealt with them, it's just been like a hurricane coming through. But I'm sure that there's more to the equation. When I hear yeah. him speak and, and obviously his music and the thought and the intention, and the way he plays social media, right? That's... He's As can, major. he's major. memeing himself before you. Dude, like the, right the key like, to winning in a rap battle <laughs> is you gotta be able to get in front of why someone's gonna dish you before <laughs> they dish you. Yeah. And he's the king of that. Like right, he's got the lint roller out if his shit's looking not fresh. <laughs> rolling it right there. Right right there. Uh, and it's always a meme, right? I feel like you gotta be able to create these memeable moments. Yeah. If it's not a sound bite. And it's not viral, then it didn't count. I didn't notice that too. We have a lot of Drake memes, like a lot of like gifts and stuff like that of him. I didn't notice how much of them I use until now. <laughs> yeah, nah, he does. <laughs> like, the Drake Shake app. Like he was, app? you could app? basically put Drake into any scenario you want. It was also vi- I mean, he's just oh, been yeah, doing yeah. this for ten straight summers, yeah. but uh, it, he could. He's just knows how from the hotline bling. If there's something funny, he knows how. 
about him. Yeah. He the, knows how to bring it out man. and make it uh Hot. that moment. <laughs> about and somehow and like I always say and he said it in a song as well, but you know, sometimes that kind of cocky part comes out as well. Like realistically think about it. If you if you write a song, you put your heart and soul into that song. Like yo Drake, can you get on this? He gets on it. That's now Drake's song. No matter how hard, how many no nights how, you stayed up, no matter how hard you try, how like. many dictionary <laughs> searches, it's now Drake's song, and that could be a blessing. No, that's a blessing. I'm not gonna say a curse because then now you're gonna expose you. Like, why yeah. is Drake working with you? Who are you? Why is Drake? So yeah, yeah, it's a blessing. And he makes it sound better, right? He does. Yeah, like, like uh, he just has that smooth he adds, over. Yeah, like yeah, he like, adds a kind of different element to the song all the time. Going up on a Tuesday. Like, would that song have been that song? No. And would that <laughs> artist have been, been that artist? There's no. no time answering that. No. Right? Especially and, now that he's not nobody. Uh, not, not nobody, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot his name. I remember it now. Right? <laughs> and you then, gotta really think about it. And then, yeah, exactly. And then, like, even YG. Like, that mm. first song, Who Do You Love? I mean, mm. it, now YG was able to parlay it. Yeah. But that Still song got YG on the map. But then mm-hmm. that did it, that thing did ring off though. <laughs> I, it would have been the song it is today without Drake, but yo, that <laughs> rung off. And then they tried to go again for like one hundred. No, that was him in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one hundred. Why, Why you always hating? Yeah, damn. You need somebody like that on your team that shoot from three. Don't really every miss. time, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dre's a shooter, and, and it's just I agree. He's a, he's fun to watch. So as far as the trends go in 2020, what do you see happening in music right now? I want to say it's going to be more artist controlled. I want to say this is the era where the artists now don't have as many barriers to entry. But Mm. I still think that this is going to be the labels are very well armed to to break artists mm-hmm. yeah. and so i still think there's going to be a little bit of a riff in that i don't think it's going to be i think more and more artists are going to get smarter and i think that they should get coached mm-hmm. and be less reliant on the labels so and coached what do you mean coached coached on just from you know artists that have been through it or um, executives that are outside of the kind of major system that can help them break or help them tour or help them yeah. find endorsement deals. I feel like, or help them like structure deals so that they can own their masters. I think we're gonna see a lot more of this era be in control of the, the indie artist um, starting to become the majors. All right, so our, as far as trends, like you said, just a, not to cut you off, just a piggyback um, off what you said, trends. A uh, trend that we see in music is like, you know, the drugs and stuff being used. So like juice or so somebody in the music industry close to artists and stuff like that. I'm not saying to snitch on anybody. I'm not saying you know what I'm saying? When you see these certain things as representatives for them, do you step in? Like how do you try to show them like, you know, or come like on? Can't, like, do they allow you to step in? Like Yeah, I kinda have a see something, say something mentality. Yeah. So you if you don't say something, mm-hmm. then you're almost an accomplice to some extent. True. So true. I feel like if somebody's doing something stupid or acting wrong or putting their hands where they shouldn't or yeah. y- using substances or or not being smart with their money, like I kind of am just a, a shooter that just tells you what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Um, and and but I think people know I'm coming from the right space. Yeah. So I am pretty honest about just telling people, yo, why would you do that? Or that's not a good idea. Or don't do that. Or hey, telling his friend, let's get some help for that person. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm more on the team of, you know, people are gonna do what they want to do. Most you can't. You can yeah. lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink Most it. Definitely not. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> I'm definitely going to be someone that's calling you out. And, 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 you know, with artists like Juice World, you could just see that is, he was just spiraling. He was he was just using some of the wrong things, yeah. you know, and, and it just was sad. It was sad that, that it just feels like it was just bad judgment in a crucial moment. Yeah. I don't even think necessarily it was probably bad habits. But it just sounds like he rang off at the wrong time 
uh, and panicked yeah. and and was playing with some serious shit. Shit, yeah, man. It's so sad. It right. broke my heart, yo. Yeah. I don't feel. I just feel like it's a new thing. I mean, and that's the thing you could never really like. You know, as growing up, as so there's people who's like there's different levels of people and there's people who's like you know complacent with their life at the moment like yeah i'm good right now and there's people like us who's like on the come up trying to grind and there's people like you who's like closer to your goals working harder and harder and stuff like that and there's people who are there. up there yeah and like f- there's throughout all these different stages of people there's always like that stress that you feel like you want to be out of it so like us on the come up it's always like yo i can't wait to get up there so i can feel better in life but popping or blowing up doesn't really guarantee you that sanity doesn't really guarantee the happiness and yeah it doesn't yeah. really solidify so at the end of the day it all kind of brings it back for us as the risings or the up and comings like what are we really chasing it if like you know like down here we're trying to get ourselves out of our neighborhoods could find yourself up there i don't know like you know so like at the end of the day what are you really chasing so it just makes you like wonder but yeah. then it comes down to who you are i, I, I feel like you gotta live in the moment you gotta yeah. feel mm-hmm. like the present is the present Definitely. and and enjoy the ride. Yeah. Let me tell you, you're gonna look back and you're gonna say, yeah, it was a lot more fun coming up yeah. than necessarily when you know, you're in an ivory tower doing these type of tapings yeah. and you know, <laughs> it, the money got between you guys and oh, it, it was like, different stresses and yeah, you know levels, drama levels. with baby mamas and <laughs> yeah, man. You know. but the chain popping though and there's something to it but i i think look it all happens the way it's supposed to definitely mm. and it's a lot of fun coming up mm. and it's a lot of fun every day if you just kind of look at it like this is god's blessing yeah. today and and i'm gonna make with it what i can yeah. And I'm gonna fall back and let God take the rest of it in His hands. See, hold on. I do. God drives this podcast. Yeah. I he mean, does. when, when you does. start the podcast with a prayer, yeah. like that was pretty epic. Yeah, for me, because you want Him to guide the content so it could hit who it got to hit. Boom, <laughs> it could flow and stuff like that. Cause we have had a lot of hiccups, and sometimes you may like have a little curse here and there, but it's just like God knows we have good on our heart, but. Like, to, like you were saying, like, you know, the control thing. I wrote this note for myself. I made it on my screen. It's like, for 2020, I want to master myself controlling what I can, controlling myself and the things that I can, observing and letting go of the things that I can't, leaving it to God, letting him, letting him have his way kind of thing. So That's the like, reminder right there. That's beautiful. You should definitely put that up on the uh, on the blog. Yeah, man. Or on the gram. I mean, it's... Girl of viral. It's because <laughs> that's exactly the point. Yeah. I think... You got to enjoy the ride and, and mm. it's going to be fun. It's going to mean that much more when you get there mm. if you don't take shortcuts and you do the work. Grind it out. To get there you know, we're out here after work hours, late night, late. Times Square, you know, been grinding all day. Yeah. But we're out here, you know, on, on, on the mission. We're trying to figure it out. So can I ask you how it was Every for you day. in Brooklyn? Figuring it out. What'd you say? Can I ask you how it was for you in Brooklyn? Like yeah, I see. I liked Brooklyn mm-hmm. just because it was this kind of cool crowd. It just felt like that was what I knew. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you the difference between in Brooklyn and in Westchester. Uh, all of my friends growing up in Brooklyn, when they got to high school, got mugged. I mm-hmm. hang out with my Brooklyn friends, and they sit around telling Sounds stories like of how <laughs> <It does. laughs> they got robbed on the mm-hmm. train, how they got their bike stolen in front of their face, how they got stories. I got stories. <laughs> you know, everybody did. Like yeah. it, it would be, it was, it was chaotic. I'd be on the school bus, and like kids would jump in from the back and like hit people in the back with like socks full of chalk. When I got to Westchester and I was a very small kid, I did the mugging. Yes, sir. <laughs> that Brooklyn swag yeah. transferred so well in Westchester <laughs> that I could just like stomp and everybody would kind of rattle. I, I yeah. it was like I hit Brooklyn with just I hit Westchester with so much swag coming from Brooklyn that it was just a different world so it was it, it was fun i 
probably could have done a little bit of both mm. yeah. and and probably been better off. But I ended up being like the president of my high school oh, so in, look at that. In, in where I grew up. And like, but I was the same way in, in, in Brooklyn. I was the chairman of the lower grades. Oh, I wow. just, I was the same. It's just, you were living in a different level of yeah. kind of safety, mm. yeah. but not in the same level of kind of, Coolness. I would say coolness. Yeah, I think Great. we all could like relate yeah, yeah. to like that Brooklyn stuff. Like yeah. it just it just give you that grit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like wherever you go, like people just know where you're from. Like always, like wherever I, I go. Feel it. You yeah. see something you look like? Yeah, you look like a Brooklyn dude. Yeah, like, yeah. you look like a Brooklyn dude. Oh, definitely Tim's. Oh, <laughs> Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. New York. It's it's like that Brooklyn go gets it mentality. Mm. That I think I still got in me. No, nah, definitely. It seems like it. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, I feel like definitely a swag. Yeah, we have a swag. Out yeah, here. we have a swag. It never we definitely you. have a swag. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look, every place has got swag is in everybody, but that Brooklyn swag is that kind of like we're gonna get it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Look at Jay Z. Jay Z, what billionaire? Somebody mm. recorded to me. Give me that phone, man. The, oh, my god! Give me that phone, bro. I need that. Oh, <laughs> what, yeah, what time is it? Boom. Give me that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I feel like that never leaves you. That so was like, a very Brooklyn move. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. give me that. Please. I understand yeah. it. Like, because, like, what are you doing? Like, like yeah, and it wasn't even like a... Give me that. He he looking. Lucky what, he you only, got, what you got on here? What apps you got on here? Lucky, <laughs> he lucky he only grabbed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, feel me? Mush him down to the floor. <laughs> but, feel me, coming up from Brooklyn, I feel like... For everybody now, Brooklyn, I feel like now we're at a point in time where everybody is doing something. It's either you're mm. rapping, you have a hair salon, or you're doing Clothing, makeup. makeup everybody has, you, yeah. Yeah, a type of hustle. So it's like, be, coming from New York City where everybody, what, what, millions and millions of people, I feel like if you can pop here and become successful here in New York City, that says like a lot about you because here's where everybody come to to try to pop i know people that come here from tennessee with their rap careers people who come from yeah thinking from all, that all walks of life most definitely it's, so. the, it's the old saying the sinatra saying if you can make it here you'll make it everywhere and it's true right yeah. if you new york is i would think the strongest brand in the world mm, you know if you, anywhere you go if you come from new york and you make an impact in new york it's the global capital of the world yeah it's for business for media, for advertising, for Wall Street. Mm. Like, this is the epicenter of culture. And when you make a ripple here in New York, the whole world feels it. Everybody. Like, you got the West Coast, you got London, you got, um, in you it. know, in this it. is it. In it, in it. London, in it. Yeah. yeah. You, ever been, you ever been? I have. I, I've, I've studied out there, I've worked out there. Oh, really? I've, I've worked at uh, Sony Music. I used to throw parties out there. Oh, wow. Oh, We've done a bunch of concerts out there. Nah. Parties, don't you? <laughs> you see what I mean? I'm I, I might need an invite. My girlfriend, she was studying. Yeah, you got it, kid. <laughs> My girlfriend was studying. She did a study abroad earlier this summer where she was working with. I forget the name of them, Kappa or something like that. So they offered you the opportunity to come to give you like an apartment. She was staying in Shepherd's Bush. Oh, yeah. I went out there. We I forgot where we went to. We had a girl from London on our podcast. So I hit her. So she's sending us all the hot spots. We get there. And like the London party scene is like so crazy to me. Like I really want to go back there. The vibe is crazy. The lines is out the door. But it's like what you like see in New York City, but they all have London accents. And it's crazy <laughs> to me. So that, that's why we've been trying to get like some things going with a couple of groups. I think I want to be in London. I want that to be a yearly thing. Me being mm -hmm. in London. It's so important. I mean, especially where you're at right now. Like yeah. your job is to kind of you got to travel experience new yeah. cultures like that's how can you be a seasoned executive mm -hmm. artist podcaster without having all these different tastes okay. Most definitely. Um, and exposures so london's mm -hmm. like the new york of europe yeah it's a lot like new york it's great because it's the capital or it was it's <laughs> no longer after brexit but it yeah. was like <laughs> this kind of centerpiece for for european business mm -hmm. um it's a great town. Yeah. I just, it's not New York. So, <laughs> yeah, not. the accents are swaggy out here. But when you go to London with your New York Brooklyn accent, I heard like, that. It's, I heard it's, that. All, it's a whole different level of yeah, respect. Man. I felt great in London 
with a New York accent. I feel great yeah. anywhere with a New York Amen. accent. Nah, anywhere. that's so funny. Nah, not in New York though. Like, but you oh. go to like these different places, and they'll be like, I don't notice unless I leave New York. That's what I'm saying. Like, I went to Atlanta once because I had sponsored by um Coca Cola, and. He was out there, and all these Atlanta people that we were singing with them, they was like, yo, like, y'all accents is crazy. I'm like, our accents? Like, y'all accents are crazy. <laughs> like, they was like, nah, like, your New York accent is like, I was like, bro, I do not hear it, but y'all <laughs> shit, like, that's Southern yeah. hospitality, like, I yeah, hear that. You're just standing there going back and forth, no, your accent. <laughs> no, your <laughs> accent. Your accent. Over no, a bottle of Coca-Cola. Accent? No, it's your accent. But yeah, that, that New York swag goes big. 